Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, today is Friday, praise God. Now, you know, I'm always excited with Fridays for you because you can take the whole weekend to listen to the message again and again and again, praise God, because it's very, very important. Everything we've been talking about, especially yesterday, and what I'm going to be talking, about, talking to you about today, listening and listening and listening. It will help you. Praise God. Before we continue today, can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Release your faith with me right now. Say, Father, I demand today for my daily bread and I receive all of it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hey, God is doing something in our lives. And my prayer for you is that you understand it and then you walk right into it. Now, we are in John chapter 17. John chapter 17. And from verse 2 and 3, Jesus speaking here, he says, As you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life, he should give, he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And then Jesus went to say, this is eternal life. That they might know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Jesus said that we will know God through Jesus Christ. That's the purpose I told you yesterday. That was the purpose God sent Jesus Christ to bring us to the place of knowledge. You remember Jeremiah had said this. He says, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. I think we should read that, that verse. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jeremiah chapter 9. And let me get it here. It's important I show you. Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 23. Good. It says, Thus says, says the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. I, I want you to take note of what Jeremiah was saying here. And he was speaking by the word of the Lord. He said, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. So don't glory that people think you're wise. Because even you, you think you're smart or you're wise. He said, let not the mighty man glory in his might. So the mighty man should not glory that he has might. He says, not let the rich man glory in his riches. Don't glory in all these things. But let him who glories, glory in this. Say, if you want to glory concerning anything, this is what you should glory about. What's that? That he understands and knows me. This is God speaking. That he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord, exercising loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these I delight, says the Lord. Did you see that? Now God is saying, if you want to glory, glory is that you know and understand me that you know now why would God say this that's to tell you that many people don't understand him many people don't know him they run by manifestations and they use those manifestations to describe him no sir no he says anyone who wants to glory should glory in this that he knows and understands me that I am the Lord exercising loving kindness so now now i want you to watch that exercising love do you know what it needs to exercise to stretch and stretch loving kindness i stretch loving kindness i stretch judgment i stretch righteousness in the earth i love to exercise if you know this about god you have something to glory about that's what he's saying here so when jesus said that we will know God through him. 
What he said, it is Jesus that leads us in this path to know this about the Father. And it's only Jesus. So when people begin to use their manifestations to interpret the same thing, you know, you read a scripture and use that scripture to interpret who God is. The worst of all, <laughs> the worst of all is when we let demons tell us how God behaves. Say, so how can we do that? Oh, a lot of people do it. A lot of things you have said. Let me ask you this. You know, you, you go to places, people are ministering, for example, and they begin to say, marine spirits come out. Or there are teachings that, oh, there, are, there is a marine spirit. Now, have you wondered where they got that from? A lot of things that are thought. You wonder, where did this come from? Is this the knowledge of the Father? Oh, someone say, oh, when you have sex with someone, you, you contact a spirit. Have you wondered where they got that from? Oh, people can initiate you from giving you something to eat. Uh-huh. And people believe those things. People have quarreled. Families have, have disintegrated because someone gave somebody something to eat. It's no, you know, you know what they hold on, say, ah, you don't know what I have seen. You don't know what I have experienced. What have you experienced? You see what I'm talking about? So they use those manifestations to view who God is. And God is saying, no, no. I love to exercise loving kindness. I love to exercise judgment. I love to exercise righteousness in the earth. That's what I delight in. And that's what God wants us to know about him. So you look at all these things and then you begin to wonder, where did they get all these thoughts from that are formed, that they used to form their teachings? And those kind of teachings don't make men free. Those kind of teachings put people in bondage. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. They are teachings of demons. Teachings of demons. So they begin to talk about, you know, spirit husband, all kinds of things. Oh, pastor, you don't understand what you're saying. The kind of things we have seen. I, I don't know. Have you seen a spirit husband before? Now, I know that there is demonic oppression. Don't get me wrong. I know that there are demonic oppression. I know that there is demonic possession. Yes. I know. There, there would be. Now, many people don't even know where demons came from. Many people don't know. Oh, they, they were fallen angels that were in heaven. No! Demons were not fallen angels. Evil spirits are not fallen angels. The angels that fell, they are locked in prison. They are locked up in prison according to the scriptures. So who are demon spirits? Where did they come from? I'll tell you. Demon spirits are the spirit of the human beings that were born on earth, but they don't have their names in the book of life. They never had their names in the book of life. Hear me. They were born on earth. They never have their names in the book of life. So where did they come from? The Bible tells us the, 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 when angels slept with men, now, the angels that did that, they are locked up. They are not roaming the earth. They are locked up according to the scriptures. But the children they gave birth to, and all through till this day, those children that they gave birth to, they don't have their names in the book of life. God has no plan for such people. I'm telling you the truth. God doesn't have any plans for such Now, when they die, I want you to listen to this. When they die, there is no place that have been created for them to even rest. No place. And because they, I am Namaka. You know, I was telling you this earlier on in the week. I was telling you this, that man is not a spirit, right? You remember, the man God created is a living soul. But you see these folks, I, I pray you understand this. You see these folks that were given birth to by the union between angels and 
human beings. They were giving birth to, and those ones are actually spirit beings. But you see, now, now I want you to follow this thought. Those ones are spirit beings because the angels that pregnanted the women are spirit beings. Now, they didn't pregnant the women spiritually. They physically were on earth. Even till this day, angels come on earth for assignments. Till this day, some of you have met angels before. Now, when they are on earth, if they stay long enough, they will get hungry, they will eat. You see, they will feel sexual urge. It's normal. That's because they take on the human body. Now, if an angel doesn't control and focus on his assignment, he may lose his estate. Are you following me? Now, because the angels are spirit beings in a human body, the people they gave birth to became spirit beings. And because those ones are spirit beings and God has no place for them, when they die, all they do is roam the earth. And they will, they, because there is no place kept for them, no place. So, you remember when, when Jesus met that man, one man, one man had legions of angels in him. And they begged Jesus that he should not um, cast them, he, he should cast them into the swine. And Jesus told them to go. Why do you think Jesus told them to go into the swine? Because the truth is this, no, there is nowhere for them to go to. They always need bodies to dwell because there is no place. Now, when a normal human being dies, there is a place that is, is made available for them. You remember Jesus was describing, and he, he talked about Lazarus. And when, when Lazarus died, he, he was seen in Abraham's bosom. And then he also said the rich man died and he was found in a place. Now, I want you to understand this. These folks, and a normal human being, whether he's saved or he's not saved, when they die, there is a place for them. But these people whose names were never written in the book of life, when they die, there is no place for them. So what they do, they do, because they are spirit beings. They roam, they keep roaming and roaming. And because they keep roaming, they seek a body where they can dwell. So they can dwell in human bodies. Sometimes they can dwell in bodies of animals. Now, there are, there are those who dwell in the bodies of animals for a while. Guess what begins to happen? They begin to take the character of animals. Now, those spirits can leave the body of animals and dwell in a human body. Now, when they dwell in a human body, guess what they begin to do? The experience that they have had in that animal body, they begin to manifest it in a human body. Now, this is what I've given rise to terrible wickedness and silly behaviors on the earth. So when some people are following the crowd, they don't know what they are following. Oh, freedom for everybody. Uh, it, you, don't, you don't know. Demons are always looking for bodies to dwell in. Let's take, for example, they are in the, in the body of an animal. And that, that animal is killed. Now, the moment that animal is killed, what happens? The spirit, that demon spirit, leaves that body and then is looking for another body to dwell. Jesus himself said it. That when a demon is cast out of somebody, it goes through dry places seeking rest. And finding none, he'll say, look, let's go. You see, he goes through dry places seeking rest. Because that spirit is truly looking for a resting place. But Jesus said it will find none. Why? Because no place is... is now, what was Jesus talking about? A demon spirit. Because no place is prepared for those that demon spirit. No place, no place on earth is prepared. No place in the spirit is prepared. So Jesus said when he doesn't find, he says, let me go back to where I came out from. And he goes there and finds the place kept clean, but non occupied. Not occupied, excuse me. What is, does he do? He goes to look for seven more spirits, more wicked than it. And say, let's come, follow me. There's a body, there's a place. So it means where that one demon came from can accommodate many more demons, at least eight now. You understand what I'm talking about? Now, Jesus said that. And for he wasn't just speculating, he's telling you the truth. Now, that's what I'm explaining, what I'm explaining to you. So one human being can gather 
many demons. That one madman, legions, and that's why the man was mad. You see, because all these demons in you, in a, in a human body, is manif trying to manifest. Now, you see all those demons. Each one, if there are seven demons in one person, all of those demons will be seeking expression through that person. Now, this is why sometimes people, you don't understand people. Today they are hot, tomorrow they are cold. You don't understand what they are doing. This is why people can lie and with bold face. You're wondering, is this person okay? Many times, demonic spirits are involved. Now, truly speaking, there is nowhere for them to dwell. So they seek human bodies to dwell in. Now, this what I'm telling you is truth because Jesus himself said it. Now, I'm just trying to give you an issue as I've been taught by the Holy Spirit, where demonic spirits came from. And you, there, is, there is no place for them to go. So even if you cast them out from Mr. A, they keep roaming around. That's why I tell people, look, and, and, and I'll tell you this for truth. You don't need anybody to cast out demons from you before you, you live free from demons. You don't need someone to cast out demons from you. Oh, it's very simple. Just allow the Lord. Deliberately allow the Lord and allow the Holy Spirit to guide you in life. No demon can dwell in you. Because even if a demon tries to get to you, they cannot find expression in you. Because see, already you've given, that won't say you give your heart to Christ. That's what we're talking about. Giving your heart to Christ is not the same thing as being born again. You know, we, we join all these things together. Say, if you want to give your heart to Christ, come. What you're saying, giving your heart to Christ, is when you willingly surrender your mind to the dictates of the Holy Spirit. So what you're saying is from today, I willingly have taken this decision that I will not do anything except what I am sure the Holy Spirit is permitting me or telling me to do. So once you willingly, that's all it takes, willingly give your mind to the holy spirit that everything you do you want to get clearance from the holy spirit you want to be sure this is what god wants you to do once that is your focus you become too hot for demons why i mean not only not only will they not find expression through you you will be tormenting them if they stay there so if there is any demon in you they will begin to check out one after the other just by the way you live your life. Anyone who lives in obedience to Christ will become a, an enemy to demons. They can stay there. They can control you because they want to seek control. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I, I pray, I pray you learn this thing. Sometimes when, when we begin to talk about things like this, it's because the Holy Spirit is reaching out to someone. See, so when Jesus said, now, now I'm saying all this to, to buttress the fact that imagine people who have received knowledge from demons and they are using that knowledge to describe the personality of God. No, that's, that is wrong. Only Jesus, if you want to access eternal life, you can only access it through Jesus. And that's why Jesus even told us, this is what the Holy Spirit will be doing. He said the Holy Spirit will take from him and he will reveal to us. Praise God. Oh, what a way to end today and to end this week. Now we still have a lot to share with you and we're going to continue next week. But I pray for you now that your eyes will be open to see truth in the light of Jesus indeed. That the Spirit of God will rest upon you and truly you will submit your heart to the Lord and let the Holy Spirit control your life willingly in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I declare over you right now, everything the devil have caused in your life by your ignorance, I speak restoration right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Have the best weekend ever. God bless you. Bye.